Radhe Radhe everyone. Welcome to our daily wisdom from Bhagavad Gita session. Nathanji, Radhe Radhe, over to you. Radhe Radhe, Mutamani ji. Thank you Vijay ji for the wonderful session. Radhe Radhe, Nathanji. Bahu Samichanam, Namo Namaha, Puna Milama, Dhanyavada for today. All right. Good morning. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of uh, Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, hope you're having a, had a good weekend and a great start to your new week. Um, welcome again. I will get started with our opening prayers. So we will continue our discussion on the chariot. Go a little more deeper into that concept. Uh, looks like we have chariot all over the place right now. And it's a chariot theme all around the place. So we'll continue our discussion on that topic. Let me share my screen and then we shall get started. Able to see the screen? Yes. Amitabhani ji, volume all right, right? Yes, Nitin ji, the volume. We can hear. If you see any yeah. hiccups, do let me know. Sure. All right. We'll get started with our opening prayers. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo, Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Parabrahma, Tasmai Shri Guru E Namaha. Vasudev Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Radhe Radhe, welcome again everyone. So let's get started. Uh, the same shloka that we have been discussing like always i'll recite it and then you are welcome to follow especially if you have practiced it um we'll do a quick recap of what we discussed uh, last friday and then we will build on that discussion um try to take our understanding a little deeper today on the same concept so i'll recite it and then you're welcome to follow Evam buddhe param buddhva sanstabhyatmana matmana jahi shatrum mahabahu kamarupam durasadam. All right, do we have any volunteers? Radhe Kumarji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Uddhichi. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Evam buddhe pam buddhva sanstabhyatmanam atmana jahi shatrum mahabaho kamarupam durashadam. Radhe Radhe. Very nice Uddhichi. Radhe Radhe. Shamji, you can go ahead please. Radhe Radhe Shamji. Radhe Radhe. Evam buddhe param buddhva sanstabhyatman matmana jahi shatrum mahabaho kamarupam durasadam. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, very nice Shamji. Beautifully recited. Riyaji. Radhe Radhe, we have a couple of hands, Nitinji. Sure, sure, let's take. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Evam buddhi param buddhva Sanstabhyatmanam atmana Jahi shatrum mahabaho Kamarupam durasadam Radhe Radhe. Very nice, uh, Riyaji. I think your Sabziwala also took the benefit of your recitation today. We could hear him. Hope he could hear you as well. All right. Let's... Uh, 
Do we have any anybody else? Yes, yes we do have a couple of them. So once. Sure. Uh, <coughs> Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Evam buddhe param buddhva sanstabya atmam atmana jahi shatru mahabahu tamarupam durasadam Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, very nice, Samji. Do we have anybody else? Yes, we have three more hands. So, all right. Uh, yes, let's take uh, let's take three of them, and we'll put a full stop to three. Then, right. okay. Ashutosh Singh, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Evam Buddhe Param Buddha Sansubhyatmanu Matmana Jai Satrum Mahabaho. Kamarupam Durasadam. Wonderful. Very nice. Very nice, Ashutoshi. Radhe. All right. We'll take two more and then we'll get started. Lakshmi Prasannaji, can you please unmute? Yes, go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe, everyone. Radhe Radhe. Evam Buddhe Param Buddhva Sanstabhyatmana Matmana Jahi Shratum Mahabaho Kamarupam Durasadham. Very nice, Lakshmi ji. Wonderful. All right. Last one. Neetu ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Neetu ji. Radhe Radhe everybody. Radhe Radhe. I'm trying. Evam buddhe param buddhva sanstabhyatman matmana jahi shatru mahabaho kamarupam durasadam. Very nice, Mituji. That was trying. That was really well. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So let's get started. Short translation for the shloka is... Thus, knowing the soul to be superior to the material intellect, O oh, mighty armed Arjun, subdue the lower self. Lower self is uh, termed as the senses, mind and intellect complex. That is termed as lower because soul is the highest. By the higher self, which is the strength of the soul and kill this formidable enemy called lust. We'll do a quick recap of the concepts that we had discussed. It's important to have that continuity to be able to appreciate what we are going to discuss today. So let's do the quick recap of what we covered on Friday. So we spoke about Kathopanishad. It gives uh, this beautiful chariot analogy, which has five horses pulling it and uh, through their mouths. And it's a hand of a charioteer and passenger is sitting at the back of the chariot. Okay, Passenger is none other than us. That is the soul. Now, we know that the cycle is reversed. It's, you know, the passenger should ideally be directing the charioteer. However, and then charioteer in turn should be pulling the reins and guiding the horses. And then in, because the chariot, the passenger has gone to sleep, horses are having a free ride. They're just having the fun. Whatever they care for, they go after that. And that is what is happening. So let's, we also looked at what are these horses? They are nothing but the five senses that we have. Okay. It is used as an allegorical reference as well but it is not limited to allegory alone. Okay, This is actually explained very clearly in our state that these are like five horses. So if you, you can actually associate with that as well, right? The five senses that we have. Then comes the rain, which is nothing but our mind, uh, which should ideally be used to rain in the horses. The mind should be the controller of our senses because it's a governor. And then comes the chariot and the charioteer. Charioteer is the intellect. The chariot is nothing but our body. A lot of words over here. And then what is happening is the horses are having fun, basically. They're running in the direction that they seek pleasure in. And there is absolutely no restraint that is being exercised on them by mind because the governor of the mind <laughs> is actually submitted, is surrendered. So governor is surrendered to mind, mind is surrendered to the reins, the reins are surrendered to the horses. That is what is happening right now. Furthermore, we discussed that this is the gradation of superiority, right? Amongst the instruments that God has bestowed upon, bestowed upon us. The instrument that the, at the lowest level is our body gross matter. Our senses are also made up of gross matter, but they are higher in hierarchy because they are gyan in the riyas. They are able to have the perception of taste, touch, sight, smell and sound. And then comes beyond that comes the mind, which you can, you know, you can actually loosely couple, I mean, 
map it to the CEO operations officer. The CEO is intellect in this particular cycle. We have a bigger CEO as well, right? Mentor or chief mentor where that will be uh, the soul itself. Now, this is the typical hierarchy. And then we quickly discuss the concept. Just think of a scenario where each employee is given a free hand to run the company. You don't have a CEO and each employee is said, okay, you run the company the way you want, right? Too many cooks spoil the broth. It's loosely what's happening in our case as well. The CEO has kind of submitted to the will of CEO and CEO has submitted to the will of, of uh, you know, the lower um, basically uh, instruments that we have in our body, right? Which is uh, our senses and then the, then the body itself. We also spoke about the story of King Chanak, which was a very interesting story where the a guy is given the capital punishment. And then because it's his last night, he's given all the opulences. And the next day, King Janak meets him and says, were you able to enjoy the opulence? He said, of course not. My life was at stake. The only thing that kept on playing in my head was that tomorrow I'm going to lose my life. So I could not enjoy all the luxuries that were, you know, that came my way the last evening. And then he said, okay, you get another shot at life. You just need to take this pot of oil and make sure it doesn't drop. And then this guy goes and he, he's able to focus so much that even though it was kind of full to the brim, he made sure not even a drop falls out of it because he's intellectually convinced that this is my single shot at life. If I miss this opportunity, I'm a dead meat. So that is how King Janak explained him, right? When you are actually uh, through, through your mind, you know, you carry that conviction that, or that this life is a precious opportunity. And this is a golden opportunity for me to make or break out of it from a spiritual journey standpoint, then the required conviction, the required focus automatically comes. And that is how he's able to carry uh, his works, even though he's a king with complete detachment and dispassion towards material things. So we spoke about this concept. Then we also spoke about that in materially conditioned state, the, you know, you are in a bewildered state, basically the soul is bewildered and it is not able to exert its influence over the intellect because it's sleeping and it's bewildered. It's completely under the sway of senses. Next we discuss because of it, what is happening is we are rotating in this 8.4 million species. The passenger is being taken for a ride by the horses. And these horses are making the soul repeat in 8.4 million cycle because horses are having their own way. And sometimes we get human births after a lot of lifetimes, but then there is no escape from these uh, 8.4 million species if we continue to have the horses their own way. And we looked at this chariot and, you know, it said that if the soul is able to wake up to its higher nature and assumes a proactive role rather than submitting to the will of um, the, the charioteer, the intellect, mind and sense complex, then it can actually guide it in the proper direction. And uh, then the chariot would be able to pick up the direction that is needed for the benefit of the soul itself. And this is the actual um, hierarchy what which should actually be operational. Soul should be guiding the lower self. And what is happening right now is just the opposite. Now let's look at, okay, we also looked at this concept that knowledge of the self uh, is the key. And that is when you, if we are able to wake up our soul, then only we can defeat this formidable enemy. There's absolutely no other way. And uh, other aspect is when we keep on searching for happiness in this material world, we looked at it from a couple of examples of this cage with the parrot, you keep on polishing the cage, the parrot will still be deprived. It will still not get the nutrition that it needs. And that desire, it will never be satiated. We also looked at this fish example, that fish, all it cares for is water. No matter what you give it, if it is out of water, it will continue seeking it. And that is why, why we, even though we may get everything in life, the best possible opulences that we are only crave for, but we will still not be satisfied because we are divine. And what we need is divine. It's like fish out of water. No matter what we get in this material world, we will still not be satisfied. We also looked at a quick analogy that even the conception or our understanding that 
we are going to derive happiness from this world one day is misplaced because it is just like trying to churn butter out of lime water even though it appears milky but it is truly not milk and you can never churn butter out of it and then we had a discussion around you know this is the ride that horses are taking us to uh, i think on our portal padmaji and quite a few people they put in their beautiful views around some of the tools how we can wake up our higher nature now today we are going to dissociate we are going to look at some examples how we can understand um, the concept of soul and uh, how is it different and what is truly happening in our lives you know we'll pick up a couple of analogies and hopefully hopefully it's going to uh, illustrate the point around it so we looked at this example let's go today's topic we'll go a little deeper into that so as you see we have some people sitting here in the theater of course so the soul experiences the pleasures of the senses vicariously this is a very interesting word in english vicariously um which basically means that it experiences it indirectly and the analogy here if you look at it if you look at these people they are so bewitched by what they are seeing on the screen they are actually living it right so in the process what happens is they cry we cry i mean when we go to movies we laugh we feel the pain we live we start living the character itself right now is it really happening to us is the question so as you see they are actually gotten into the skin of the characters it's almost like it's happening to us right even in the dream state we start feeling that right when we wake up from a bad dream it's like oh, thank god it was a dream it was not really happening now same thing happening in the movie as well they are completely engrossed in that now if if you if a light let's say the movie is over and and the light comes then you wake up to that reality so although you know that it's not real but we still start living that that it's only when the light comes in the theater we know that you know it it's not real okay we need to shake that dream off and get back to our real lives so similarly in our life we are actually so engrossed in that movie that is playing that we we have forgotten who we really are it's just like watching that movie in fact there's a psychologist type forget his name i really like the quotation he gave he said uh, our life is like um, you know that horror movie even though we are feeling scared and we want to get out of there we still continue to persist with it and watch it till the end so it's something like that only even though we know there are perils and lot of things happen uh, but we still want to experience it um and that is how the life is as well so if you look at the theater only when the light comes uh, the reality dawns and then we are able to shake off whatever characters we were living in and all and this light dawns on us as scriptures say when when we leave this body okay that that's when this life dawns on us unfortunately it's too late and uh, when we are reborn as human we again start with the same um playing the same movie as we have played in multiple lifetimes in fact a lot of people who have nd experience um if you anita nurjani when if you get a chance read her book as well so um when they they leave their body or they are able to see themselves or for that matter people whom they are so deeply connected with attached with whom they have are in love with when they look at them and they have that surreal experience out of body experience they don't want to get back to that it's just like parrot we saw that example of parrot in a cage parrot is out of the cage no matter what it is you will it will never like to go back into that cage because now the soul has come into its original thing so that is how liberating it is people especially who sit in nd but the fact of the matter is when the light dawns who i truly am right this lady anuta nurjani he wrote that when she was having that experience she could see her mother whom she was so attached to and she could see her husband whom she had fought the entire world to get married to him and at that moment if somebody had given her a choice to get back to into that body she was suffering from she said i wouldn't have even for the sake of those people that she held at such a high pedestal you know from an emotional emotional attachment standpoint she said no i won't 
So soul gets that realization, what its true identity is, not this body, not this name, not this title, but then it's too late by the time it gets it. So it's just like light comes in a theater, um, but that light comes too late in our life. We, it's the, the key is to start getting closer to that reality when we are alive, because that's when we can work on our minds. And then when we, when we are reborn again, we get into that hallucinated state of living the characters and actually start playing those characters all over again with different set of people. Now let's continue um, on another concept here. So if you look at it here, this is how a movie is played, right? You have a light and then the pictures, they keep on going from one frame to another, to another, to another. So this example was shared uh, to me by Jyoti Ji. I thought today is the appropriate session to bring it to life. It's a very beautiful an analogy to understand this concept. So light that you see, right? Which through which the frames keep on moving is soul or chetana. And then we do have some scars from endless lifetimes. Our mind has impressions or some scars that it has built in over a course of multiple, endless, infinite, eter since eternity, it has been forming those some scars. So when you look at a movie being played, right, as you can see here, this is movie, the frames are being projected in front of the light. So whichever sanskar comes in front of the light or basically gets activated in our smriti becomes the cause of lust, right? Whatever that desire might come. So if you wake up and you have all of a sudden have a desire to eat a pastry or a laddu or something, that means that that particular reel or that frame has gotten activated in your smriti and that becomes your lust or at that point in time. Now those some scars are nothing but something that we have written um, in you know based on the choices that we have made in the past. So the kind of thoughts that our mind is able to generate or it generates um, compulsively involuntary is dictated by the sanskars and those sanskars are nothing but the kind of choices we have made in the past. So that light itself is Chetana, whichever Smriti gets activated, uh, you know, with basically in, in our memory, um, you know, that is dictated by some scars and that becomes the cause of our lust at that time. So it's, it's again, if you look at the movie part of it, we do get into impressions, certain kinds of, some people may be totally neutral to a certain kind of a movie that is playing and some may get very emotional. So it's all dictated by our sanskars or how our thought process is panning out at that moment in time. So anyways, now, if you look at this world, we all are actually busy driving our own chariot. So if you look at the chariot example, chariot is nothing but our body, the body that we are endowed with this life. And everybody is busy driving their chariot. Now, I would say this driving their chariot is also not a correct terminology. If you look at this example, our true identity is that of a soul the passenger, which we have forgotten, who what our true identity. So the passenger is sleeping. Chariot is our body. Now it is under the sway of the horses and horses are going in the direction that they feel is befitting for the objects that they crave for. Mind is following it. Intellect is obliging it. Intellect is surrendered to mind as well. Now, when I say the material world, we are all busy driving our chariot. That essentially means that we are actually subjected to the will of. So, in fact, we are letting our chariot being driven by the impetuous senses. We are not driving it. Driving it means somebody is exerting control over it. But in this case, that somebody happens to be our senses, which if you go to 2.67, it's these senses are called impetuous by Lord Krishna. Impetuous and reckless. And if you look at some of the synonyms related to this word, impulsive, rash, hasty, spontaneous, foolhardy, rampant, forceful, careless, thoughtless, heedless, wild, uncontrolled, inattentive, irresponsible. So if you come across all these adjectives and somebody says, we have found a friend for you that you, you are stuck with and you have to live with. And by the way, his qualifications or his resume, this person's resume is all of these. 
it will this person will be impulsive you'll have to deal with it rash hasty careless thoughtless uncontrolled inattentive irresponsible you'll say thank you very much okay i would rather have somebody else or stay alone only but in this case this is a friend or an enemy you can call it who is living with you all the times because we have not harnessed the power of our mind and intellect to tame those senses so if you look at the chariot we have been riding this chariot since time eternity lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and the reason this chariot is not taking us closer to our goal is because the driver who is at the helm of affairs is actually subjected to the will of the horses itself there's absolutely no control there and in fact if you look at this particular verse kathopanishad says that these senses are actually outward facing they are not inward facing they seek the objects that interest them they seek the object um, hankering for those object is something which is natural to those senses i need to taste this i need to touch this i want to see this it is very very natural to it and uh, and it is very obvious natural for them it's like a obsessive compulsive disorder your senses have unless they have been trained or tamed so whenever we subject to the will of our senses which are called as impetuous impulsive we are actually empowering our mind and whenever we practice austerity or try to control them with the proper knowledge we are actually empowering our intellect so choice is always there do we want to give more uh, power or strength to our intellect or do we want to give more power to our mind so whenever we keep succumb to our senses we are essentially making our mind weak because mind is losing its ability to rein in those senses and whenever we perform some kind of an austerity or control it like lord krishna has said right abhyasen that word has been used practice whenever we practice something going against the natural propensities of our ten, uh, senses we are actually arming our intellect and empowering it and strengthening it now god has made this i mean it's very interesting it's like to thicken the plot first of all the senses are given one sense is good enough to derail somebody's journey as we have seen with animals one sense is enough right for a moth to die or for a elephant to get trapped or for that matter uh, a deer to get killed or or for that matter a bee to get trapped in a flower and get killed as well and god has given us five five senses okay five times more and then it deeds are outward facing as well and they are automatically drawn towards their object so it's like to thicken the plot probably right maya was not good enough then these senses were given as well and um, that is where our mind uh, keeps on uh, following the senses and this cycle continues to repeat and because of which we are obligated to repeat because our mind doesn't go anywhere we repeat with the same mind we spoke about this example you go to haridwar you take a bottle that bottle has a uh, water full of of mud you cork that bottle tightly you put it in ganga and take it out after one day 10 day 50 days or maybe after an year when you take that bottle out you uncork it and what you see is that water full of mud that water has not transformed why because the, it was corked tightly it never got an opportunity to take in ganga or acquire the properties of ganga similarly our mind because we have not cleansed it with proper knowledge uncorking it is you know arming it with proper knowledge or bathing in the knowledge of our scriptures so even when we exit this body and take on another body let's say whenever we get a human body we will still repeat with the same mind so if i get angry today or there's a lot of anger envy um, lust greed any of those afflictions um my mind has then there's no escape from it we repeat with the same mind those tendencies will come back just like that so we have to continue working on it and it's it's like working for ourselves only and the more we work on our mind the natural by product or the benefit of it is that our senses will start cooperating and start coming under our control right it's like training your mind 
harnessing your mind, empowering your mind through the power of Buddhi Yoga. Lord Krishna is going to expound on that in more detail as we go along. Buddhi Yoga is nothing but empowering your mind by exercising the power that intellect exerts over it. And then waking up your soul is anyway a continual process. Like you spoke about this concept of silver bullet, right? For everything, if you start focusing, dovetailing your mind towards God, it is going to wake up your soul. It will start coming into its true identity. The more it will start getting closer to that, understanding who you truly are and getting beyond the conception of this body itself. So let's continue. Now let's look at... Now, uh, this. If you look at the world, right? Everybody is running and running and running. Now, which direction are they running? Nobody has a clue. Okay. If you ask somebody, where are you running? They'll say, I don't know. And if you ask them, um, where are you going? They'll say, we don't know. But at the same time, if you, if you probe them further, why are you going there? Then the most common answer everybody would have, you can ask that question to yourself as well, by the way. They'll say that because everybody is going in that direction, <laughs> I have to do that. What else am I supposed to do, right? Everybody is going there, so I have to follow. I mean, that's what life is. That's how I've seen people. That's what I've seen my parents and everybody around. So you tell me if you have a better plan or you think you know something better for me. So everybody is following uh, somewhere, running somewhere, and uh, without really knowing what they are trying to achieve here in life, right? And everybody does that, so that becomes very natural order for everyone, right? So, let's continue now. So, if you look at it, you go after a dream house. In India, it's one of the, the thing after retirement. The good thing, at least there is, we are able to delay the gratification because you have to save, save, and then hopefully one day we can afford that. In US, you don't even have to wait that long, right? Instant gratification. Whether you deserve it or not, here is the loan. Take your dream house and then figure out how to give it back to us, right? And then we have a dream car in our mind as well, obviously. Um, scooter is out of vogue right now. These are some of the things that we crave for. It, these are one of some of the milestones we set in our minds, right? Part of our successful life. We need to have money, good amount of money. Um, good spouse. Right? Marrying is considered also a very, one of the key milestones and finding a very good spouse. Then uh, raising children, that is also a big milestone. And then having parents, loving parents, having a good relationship with them, uh, getting their support. All that stuff is considered as you know some of the aspirations that we had from a, a decent or a successful life or, or a happy life, a peaceful or contented life. Now, majority of the people, they are running after material world. And these are, these are just material uh, acquisitions, if you look at it, or material relations. And we follow them thinking, you know, they're running behind it. There must be some reason. Now, we have to follow because everybody is doing that. And because everybody is doing that, the next assumption that comes is because there must be a reason for that. Yes, Ramayaji, we'll come back to that. There's no nothing bad in chasing all this okay if that is what your question is so please hold off we'll get into that discussion segment around this as well so um, when they think there must be some reason for that and that's why it is happening this whole cycle now if you look at it from scripture standpoint um, so we become busy preoccupied in life running after them and we don't even pause for a second to know if it's the right direction or not right it's like they call herd mentality or dhedchal as you can see, um, simple but wrong and complex but right. Very few people take the less dreaded path. And those who do, even then, you know, reaching the destination takes a bit of a doing. And then hundreds and thousands of people, they have, you know, spiritual spark. And if you look at the direction, it's exactly the opposite. And because they are so less, you would play safe. Typically, I mean, what most majority is doing, I think that might be the good, the better thing to do, uh, less risky thing to do. So generally, we end up following them consciously or subconsciously. That cycle keeps on repeating. And Lord Krishna, we spoke about a couple of shlokas, right? Bahu Janma Anante and Sahestreshu, his, his, these two shlokas that he, Sahestreshu Manushyanam. He said that, obviously, this is a less, less traded path because we are so 
infatuated by the pleasures of this world that we don't want to think beyond that right and it is with great providence and grace that if we come across some guru or we have that spiritual spark because of some past sanskars of devotion that's when we start picking up and start building on it but it takes a while it doesn't come so naturally now so get down to that part now finding that dream job right this is one of the key milestones that's why we study we have to clear our entrance and we have to get to the best of the best colleges and within that also best of the best jobs that dream job is one of the cravings that we have then finding that perfect spouse is also one of our aspirations right saath jiyenge saath marenge and all those kasme vaade we do right all that stuff that bollywood industry is based upon for most part and uh, finding that dream house it is also considered okay we need to have our own house in america it's called living your american dream and they enable it fairly early on especially if you are here and then raising kids raising a family that is also a big milestone and then a happy family right so the question today is everyone goes after these and so do i this is what life is all about now the question or the bit of a discussion i wanted to have around this do you agree do you disagree or you agree and disagree both so let's go get this going i'm going to build on this concept uh, not today but uh, next session uh, because just bear in mind we spoke about the concept of chariot and this is this is where our chariot has been taking us all along okay so let's get this going and uh, let me yes uh, ramya ji you had some question so please get it going and then let me add another flavor to it if you look at all of these activities they are intended towards becoming happy okay yes ramya ji please go ahead जी प्लीज अन that this matter they don't have a soul and we are facing something material but spouse children and parents it's like a connection with the soul and the soul is divine it is uh, uh, spiritual and we are establishing a connection uh, like say someone is trying to find a spouse or and they have the children or the connection with the parents uh, it's a connection from a soul to a soul how can this be considered material so um if you think about it yes they these relations are given to us for a specific purpose right but if we if we make it the thing in our life that is also a problem because it's it's an individual journey it's a, it's like a lone mountaineer trying to climb a mountain okay your spouse will also not accompany you when you leave this world you tell them come with me they will not nobody can accompany and these relations they keep on switching okay that is why it's god's mercy he makes us forget things these relations also keep on switching you may have you know somebody's his husband wife may switch you may have completely different set of people it's not even group concept that okay if you are somebody's a parent they'll be your nothing of that sort these are just roles who come to your life for you to learn something and mutually in an ideal scenario it should be a mutually rewarding journey for each other problem happens where we get so hung up you know this is mine and we get so attached and make it the goal of our life and feel so emotionally attached to those things that um, that actually binds us so if let's say you are so attached to your kid or say your parents or let's say your spouse right and you are so emotionally attached to them what happens is you get the object of your attachment yam yam that shloka is there lord krishna says whatever is your object of your um uh, object of your uh, attachment that is what you end up getting okay now if they god forbid if they go to some other species then you are oblig obligated to follow them there so point here being we have to look at these relationships in perspective as opposed to get so attached to them because end of the day it's our individual journey 
and we go back and forth you know some these relations are temporary because soul has no relation other than god god is the only sambandhi god is the only sambandhi who's accompanying you lifetime after lifetime now what happens in our mind is we get so hung up with relation material relations in our life that we think that is my world and we we keep on repeating this lifetime after lifetime the different set of souls whoever come as in as part of our relations so you have to do duties that doesn't mean you reject that you have to do duties towards them but then with a the perspective that end of the day it's an individual journey not something that uh, they will accompany you or you can accompany them you can benefit them in their spiritual journey as long as that association remains but nothing beyond that that is the hard truth of life okay i can see quite a few hands i think they can answer better than what i did so let's hear from other okay. parts yes um kamlesh ji radhe 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 kamlesh ji radhe radhe uh radhe radhe uh i take it like this uh if whatever is given by whatever is given to us by god is a gift our children our peers everything so everything is given by god is a gift mm -hmm. and we are the caretaker of that very true and if we take a caretaker and if we take ourselves as a caretaker then uh, we will be able to perform our duties more uh, efficiently without attaching too much matlab our duty is uh, this is our duty to perform to look after them but we will not be so much attached Uh, as a in this uh, hospital, as a nurse, look after the patient, but she is not attached. So this is my point of view. And Wonderful. I think caretaker. I love that you. part. Very. Uh, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Kamleshi. Beautiful point. I think caretaker is the right way. That sense of proprietorship when we start having my, that is where the problem happens. And today only, I think I was looking at Swami Ji's. Um, one on one with uh, that guy forgot his kejriwal beautiful point he brought in i think we can revisit that in karam yoga as well he said that attachment actually does not let us grow our wings or help us reach our true potential and detachment immediately uplifts us and helps us bring out our best so he gave a it's a humorous thing he said there was a guy who was uh, seeing a grand fire right and people were aghast looking at that grand fire a factory was up in fire so this guy he he was you know getting so upset and tense and anxious and he was very sad uh, so father and he he was literally crying and until the sun comes and he asks what's the matter he said look you know our factory is on fire so the son says hey, you forgot we sold it 3 days back he said oh really now it makes me feel okay so the moment you get attached to something you are fine it's only the attachment that wears us down that brings all the pressure the anxiety and all those things so immediately the moment you got the detachment you are done so you can perform your duty think clearly lot of good things can happen um but that detachment it's called detached attachment where you are doing your duty with compassion with love not you become irresponsible say i don't care for you but at the same time you have that perspective at the back of your mind that you are just a caretaker just a caretaker no sense of proprietorship whatsoever and it's just a temporary arrangement just like a train journey where the passenger has his own ticket and you have your own ticket it was just a temporary association and then after we go our own way yes let's continue this discussion rakhi ji radhe radhe राधे राधे नितिन राधे राधे अमृत वानी जी एंड एवरी वन दिस इज एग्जैक्टली वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू कोट नितिन फ्रॉम स्वामी जी इज टॉक येस्टरडे दैट हाउ एलिवेटिंग डिटैचमेंट इज एंड दैट एग्जाम्पल मिनट द ओनर कम्स टू नो दैट ओ वी हैव ऑलरेडी सोल्ड इट सो फील सो रिलीव दैट वॉज रियली ब्यूटिफुल आई ऑल्सो वॉन्टेड टू से लाइक when the soul gets this human body that is the highest uh, form that the soul gets amongst all these 8.4 million species yep 
Did we lose you? So, why not been divine? The only purpose is to realize God or Bhagavad Prakti, as Maharaji puts it. That is the sole purpose uh, which we have to keep in mind. Rest is all automatically will fall in the category of responsibilities and duties or being a caretaker. Whether you are in a family or you are blessed to be a uh, you know, sannyasi or swami or being single, uh, though most of the saints in India have been in grihas, so we cannot make excuses that um, yeah, we being grihas, we cannot walk on this path. Uh, the uh, yeah, the soul and soul purpose of is not like what we do in the world because that goes unaccounted. The only karm, as per Maharaji's lecture, is that is counted is when we remember God or we when we connect to God. That is the only um, karm that is noted down. The rest all goes in like yeah, it's better we keep it in the category of caretaker and responsibility or duties. So the minute we attach this word to them, our emotion will be less. Or if we are able to attach gradually our mind to God or Guru, uh, to keep connecting, to keep listening. Uh, yeah, it, it, It's really nice to get that hankering that any free time you are logged into that gyan or uh, bhavna. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Very nice session, Nitin. In fact, I noted down that empowerment of mind and empowerment of intellect. <laughs> okay. Yeah, even Swamiji had said ki every with every austerity that we practice, we empower our soul. Very true. That's Thank true. you, Radhe Radhe. Beautiful point, Kakati, like always. Very, very true. Um, yes, that was my key takeaway as well, you know, that whether we are empowering our mind, weakening our mind or strengthening our intellect, that choice is always there with us. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Pagadi. Let's hear. I can see quite a few other hands raised as well. And in the meantime, please fill out the attendance tracker, provide your feedback. Um, you can post that out and let's continue our conversation. Shikaji, you can go ahead, please. Radhe uh, well, I have questions today. Maybe instead of answering, I have a question. So um, in terms of the, the previous slide, which you posted about the parents and uh, like, you know, our attachment towards our parents. So sometimes it happens that, you know, uh, we get attached, like too much attached to our parents. And, uh, you know, sometimes it happens if they fall sick or, you know, if they doesn't follow certain uh, things, like, for example, in terms of having the right kind of food or, you know, uh, just you know uh, exerting themselves a lot and then you tend to like you know tell them that okay you should not do this much because now you're becoming old or maybe you know in terms of the food habits as well and but they don't listen to you and after some time you feel as if like you know you have drained your energy though you keep on saying it but still they don't um like understand it just like maybe the when when we were kids we didn't understand that bit whether whatever they wanted us to understand so, um, you know, in terms of that, what should we are uh, like, what should we do in terms of as uh, like, you know, as you said about detachment and, you know, that we should be detached, though we have to do our responsibility. So what should be our, um, how, how shall we go ahead with everything, like, you know, in terms of the family and the people who are close to us? Yeah, I mean, I think participants can probably chime in and help. Shikha ji with a very, very practical question around that. Again, I think the same principle goes, um, um, you, know, you can take a horse to water, but can't make him drink, right? End of the day, um, if we could, we could change just by listening to somebody, we would have changed just listening to one lecture of Swamiji or any saintly person for that matter. So we all, we all do things at our own pace and uh, are predominantly dictated by our own samskars. And uh, so to that end, you try your best, but you also appreciate the fact there is only so much you can do. You don't stress over that because you have to let go. This is another, maybe the, the lesson that we need to learn in a lot of cases, including the kids as well, is to let go because beyond the point you really can't do. You can do it with the purity of intention, the best you can do in a situation. But beyond that, if you are stressing out, it's carrying that attachment a little too far because there's there's only so much you can do. 
right? And if they are really value you and all, they will listen to you just to, you know, do that. But then end of the day, we all do things at our own pace. And sometimes we learn it the way we want to learn, not how somebody else is telling us. So let go is, is the key in every relation, I would say, because when we said get too attached, then it causes stresses, friction, and all those complications come along with it. Maybe other participants can chime in around that. But I'm. Uh, thank you, Nitinji. I have uh, one more question. Like, you know, what is the best way to live life? Like, you know, as um, we, I mean, as we are in the spiritual journey and we keep on listening to all these sessions and everything, we keep on reading spiritual uh, things. So, what should be the best way to live? Like, you know, sometimes it happens that when we. Uh, become little detached so we feel that you know maybe we are becoming little rude or maybe we are just oh. becoming self-centered so detachment should not bring that actually that's that's misunderstood concept it should bring in okay. more compassion and more more empathy actually detachment doesn't mean you become rude or ir irresponsible um, mm -hmm. at least that's how i understand it and that's how it's meant to be you are able to operate out of more compassion because now you are not attached to the you know, the person itself, you're, you've expanded your bubble and it would help you act more freely and you are able to think more clearly and you are able to bring in your best, you know, that you have to offer to that relation when you are detached and you are operating purely out of love and compassion, not out yeah, of... Yeah, but when we, when we bring lots of love and compassion and empathy and everything, so it happens now that we tend to get attached then. That is where we have to draw them. This is a whole. This is not your problem. It's it's all of us problem, and that is hopefully where we can we need to get better bringing the spiritual principles to our mind. And you say what is the best way to live life? Best way to live life is get up at early in the morning, do your meditation, sadhana, but make sure eight thirty you log in and attend the daily bhag wisdom. Of <laughs> okay, that much I can. Do. All right. Thank and you after, so much. After March, you do it at 7.30, okay? So that is another best thing to do. So, yeah. All right. I think 7.30 is much better. Yeah, I mean, whatever I've heard from authors, obviously, I have not practiced. So I'm not even entitled to talk about this because only when you have practiced mm -hmm. it and experienced it, you, can, you are in a position to tell, right? And people will also understand. But at least what I'm trying to practice is what people say is, learning to live in the moment. Mostly we are mm -hmm. worrying about the future or thinking about the past. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you, even if you look at Eckhart Schalt and a lot of people that they talk about in even our scriptures, they say, if you can live the moment, the present, you can focus on that and make the most of it. That is better. Now, easy said than done. But then I think uh, I'm, I'm getting better, better at it uh, than we, because we get hung up in a lot of memories or, or unnecessary worry. Mm -hmm. about the future. So I think that is one of the yardsticks uh, of uh, spiritual success as well how better we are getting into that rather than getting bogged down by unnecessary thoughts thoughts around it right and then if you are able to cultivate love for god bringing that knowledge then it becomes a joyful every day becomes joyful because now you've gotten a reason you are building a connect with the divine it, it is like tapping into something most beautiful and something most powerful i would say that is the best thing if you can figure out some way some triggers to start connecting with the divine building that relationship i think life becomes a cakewalk after that at least for me it has gotten simplified a lot for whatever little progress i've been able to make that much i can tell you let's hear from other participants as well thank you so much no worries thank you shikha ji annapurna ji please go ahead thank you for waiting yes annapurna ji yeah do you want me to unmute You've been unmuted. You have already yeah, unmuted, Anupurna ji. You have unmuted. Oh, okay. Can, can you hear, hear me? You. We can hear. We can hear you. Okay. You know, I just want to say that you know I agree with this. That you know that's the way you are guided. You know, unless you are given a perfect uh, purpose of your life by a, a proper guru, you always think you know. This is what is the life is, you know, all over the world. This is what is stressed, but you know, uh, I think it has become like. Unfortunately, it has become like a norm. You know, you yes. become something successful, marry, have children, and then you know, do a little bit of God. You, you know, because you cannot see Him, you never get closely 
with him and think that he is your eternal father and all those deep thinking you don't think like that and you know, if you say that people are religious if they go to temple or do observe some festivals and that's it you know they are busy in their life with other things and before they know they you know they just die like that you know i think you know the proper knowledge needs to be given i i very curious to know how many people can change you know uh, even for prisoners and everybody instead of giving punishment if they are given proper spiritual uh, thing i think they can reduce some crime you know Very even true. in america i think awareness has to be there you know consciousness should be raised to the highest level you know which is hidden and nobody can feel it or uh, perceive it because whole world thinks of you as one person so you grow into it that's what is the difficulty you know very rarely now that i am under jk yoga i am only realizing all this too late but i'm happy that you know must have done something good to know all these things you know stress the purpose of your life and all this knowledge you know material world and that doesn't come with you and all those things i'm sure a lot of people they know they may really try to work for towards that goal thank you radhe radhe beautiful point annapurna ji yes i think that's what kiran bedi did with the prisoners in tihar cheri imparted them knowledge so that they don't don't feel the need to come back again so very beautiful point see the, it said that the biggest charity in this world is to give um, you know bring about the transformation in someone you can give money to somebody in charity you can give them food that is fine that's a noble deed but then if you can bring about a change in somebody even if it's this much you can actually help them take a leap of lifetimes because this much of change in the soul to bring about that can can take multiple innumerable lifetimes so like kiran bedi did i mean you really said that if you can actually Uh, spread the message of spirituality or inspire somebody nothing like that beautiful point annapurna ji uh, let's hear from other participants real quick i'll just read the quick comments couple of comments uh, jal ji says if what everyone does is what life is about it is extremely boring and dull must be more to life than that younger generation realizing the set path is not for them very true that's very true see this is called template life where we are not thought it's easy right to it's difficult to think and easy to copy so we are essentially copying but then uh, you know things can work out because of whatever reason when we start having the spark we should not we should just latch on to it and keep building on to it and uh, and then uh, it's one of the most exciting things you would ever undertake in your life at least that's what i'm realizing as swami used to say that when you start on a self transformation program that is the most exciting project you will ever undertake let's hear from other participants one more comment tanya ji says bg 2.47 nato do your dharma do the best effort but not be attached to outcome shika ji's question nato very true don't be attached to outcome yes not attached to outcome not attached to outcome yeah very true thank you so much tanya ji Shikha ji, hopeful that hopefully that was icing on the cake you needed. Okay, any other things or we, I can see four couple of hands. So, uh, Lakshmi ji, go ahead, please. Oh, sorry, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yeah, Radhe Radhe. Yeah, I have a one question, Nitin ji. Like, uh, see, when I was uh, doing my night shifts, basically I'm a doctor. So one night, uh, I lost my one patient. so that was the first uh, thing uh, first case which i lost so the next day morning we had to actually uh, uh, report it to our superior regarding the case so after losing and after writing the death certificate i was literally crying in my room what wrong i have done what should have been done to save her but i couldn't save her so then my superior said what you have done is done that is your duty but the left is not in your hands so that's why she went off so in those days i didn't understand those uh, i mean the meaning of those sentences but i got now i'm understanding i'm recollecting those things 
and the next thing is uh, uh, one more question but after 10 years of my service uh, uh, i lost my father 2 years back so i was so attached to my father uh, but when he was sick in the hospital for one month i was going on duty i am attending my father talking to doctors everything i know the status at the end what happens but even though i am knowing i was doing my duty but when i lost my father i was not so emotionally crying expressing my i mean the grief regarding the loss all those things but i don't know till today why i was like that and the third thing is uh, my sister's uh, friend was in the hospital for the liver failure where all the friends almost 20 members were doing all the sort of work from them gathering the blood the uh, money everything but i was the only one person i was always thinking he will not be alive ahead because it was medically in a bad state so i couldn't do a single help rather than asking the questions of his status i'm explaining them so i'm not understanding what state of mind i'm having in this three different situations i don't know it's very subjective we can talk more about it um, I, i don't know if i'm even qualified to talk about these things uh, there are a lot of nuances around it but yeah i i can relate to what you said initially you know my one of my doctor friends he said that you will always remember the first death that happens in your arms right and even the soldier the first person they kill when they have to do that bullet but i think you have a part of you know uh, like in the last two instances you talk about it's it's almost like a sense of detachment or dispassion about those situations right as i could understand and maybe that's that's kind of a good thing more about more towards the dispassion that we need in this world to see things in perspective right they say right we have to carry this duality really well in our lives be hard like a thunderbolt uh, in this world and be soft like a butter when it comes to the matters of god it's very difficult to execute that but that is the desired state but lakshmi ji let's continue that conversation well i'll give you a quick call and we can talk about it and then if there are some learnings we can bring to the session here as well Uh, but it will be a bigger discussion i can see quite a few hands so let's continue and then actually you can have an off offline conversation around it shyam ji you can go ahead please radhe 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 shyam ji radhe bhai bhai uh, i want to say it is so easy to say then do things matlab bolna bada aasan hai and then do things and entire life we have learned that ye mera this is my my parent my spouse my kids my family whatever and then you have to say ki i'm just a caretaker just because i have i have been to this world been to this this life i have i have read geeta and i suddenly change my mind myself my thought ki geeta aisa bol rahi hai to this is i'm just a caretaker out of the blue how irony of life isn't it and it, is, life... it is irony um, for sure it is irony and it's not something you can flip like this but then yes, because i have read geeta in last one year two year or at certain age of my life i change my mindset change my thought process because i am a, a not proprietor i'm a caretaker of all my things around me so change flip that's so it's, simple isn't it it is a flip we are asking but it's not going to happen like a flip but the hope is that over time we will get better with this understanding because if you look at the example of swami ji right he left everything one day so the fact that he was able to do that doesn't mean it was a flip one night flip that means in his past lives he would have contemplated deeply into that right and he was born with sanskars where it did not come as such a big rude shock for him it was probably as simple as a fish taking to water buddha it was a flip we are not buddha or them but there has to be a start some day sometime that is the key people like swami ji or buddha how never know but how was that no no huh? yeah i know there are but, but not all of us can be them no it's one of the million cases we have people like them but then we don't have a choice otherwise we will suffer the same misery lifetime after lifetime for different relations in different forms so it's like helping ourselves not the buddha was asked by somebody how did you become like this and he said 50 lives back i was exactly like you 
that is i mean we don't have a choice otherwise think of it how emotionally vulnerable we are right and this cycle repeats for different people in different lifetimes and it keeps repeating so either i remember my, my, my past lifetimes or i started in gita at early age the only options i have <laughs> no third way sorry i didn't get that you didn't do what either either i remember my past lifetimes or i start reading gita at early age only choice i have otherwise i'm i'm gone case is is that so no, you are not the only person we are all sailing in the same boat shyam ji so if you think about it we are all sailing in the same boat but if we start doing it then god has said in bhagavad gita only that he will make sure the next time this starts much early on in life right so we have to take a step somewhere and it's like saving our own self not anybody else because think of it how emotionally vulnerable we are so many things can actually cause turbulence to our mind right so many relations are out there so many things that can go wrong so end of the day we have to help ourselves and that's probably why this uh, this this is how this whole game has been designed so somewhere there has to be a start i know i can understand what you're going through right now but just take care of yourself stay strong seema ji please go ahead radhe 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 everyone radhe radhe um, and last the turn of my thought but i'll just read what i wrote here um we we change our bodies in every life every lifetime like we change our clothes um and so serving our families like shikha was saying parents there is attachment um we serve them with love but as a trustee um that way we take care of their needs but we don't enforce it and treat them lovingly and then the other thing how to live life is i would say um that um enjoy uh, whatever we're doing in the present moment with joy uh, learning to live happily is also a dharma to be followed yep. but without attachment meaning uh, nato is one thing and the other is not to worry uh, lament over the past or be anxious over the future uh in the present moment without really wanting something uh, without attachment or aversion and when we do that with practice and filling the part of uh meditation punya um uh, meditative merits that helps us to be equanimous in with our feelings um and not go too high in the feelings or too low knowing that this too shall pass very true pleasant yes. moment pass yeah pleasant moment passes ill moments pass except that we don't want the pleasant moments to pass we we want the ill moments to pass quickly however really? if we are uh if I, i believe personally what helps me is keeping that part of meditation energy full that i can make withdrawals and not really uh, have a negative balance very true eventually we make that a habit so that uh, issues are small intensities and then medium intensities and then large intensities and then emergencies and dire emergencies don't bother us so you uh, check your progress as to how you have become and it is nothing overnight uh only ill things happen overnight quickly <laughs> um lo- good things in life take a long time so you can keep up with your um, uh, meditation the source that helps you um internally and for me externally is subduing the five senses by fasting for food thank you beautiful points um, seema ji yes good things happen slowly in life sahaj pakke so meetha hoye that's how things go and thank you for providing some practical tools around it as well meditation you know building that reservoir so that we can dip into it makes withdrawals when we really need it is very very important we need to keep that pot full uh, and we can make withdrawals only if we, if we have enough credits in it it's just like a withdrawal account right 
Beautiful point. Thank you so much, Seema ji. Let's quickly hear from other participants. I know we are a little bit over time. So. Shuman ji, can you unmute yourself, please? Yes, go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yeah, Radhe Radhe, Nitin ji. Uh, uh, very nice discussion. And uh, my point is that uh, from cradle to grave, uh, we have different stages in our life. And uh, as per the Hindu philosophy, we have the ashrams like Grahast Ashram, Brahmacharya, and so on and so forth. So it's not actually default mode the way we are living this in this world, it is actually designed by God in, in that way. Yeah. Now, uh, in God has given us a human form, which is very valuable, as Pragya Ji also mentioned. And uh, we also have our worldly responsibilities uh, to be done. And in fact, uh, uh, a true devotee is one who knows his duties and fulfills them. So, uh, and you know, we need people who are attached to uh, God completely, like Swamiji. At the same time, uh, even ordinary people like us, so God has designed like that. Uh, there are different people with different uh, level of consciousness, uh, which is required uh, for the society. So it's absolutely okay uh, that uh, if we are enjoying in, in this world, uh, but again, we should be anchored to God. I think that is very, very important. Now, uh, like our duty as a son, as a husband, as a father, as a member of community, uh, what, how we live, it should be worthwhile. And we sh uh, our purpose of coming to this earth, we should add some value or May, make a dent on this universe. Like you mentioned about um, fi uh, finding a dream job. So uh, if we find a dream job, probably uh, we'll be having financial independence because we'll be able to spend more time in seva or spend that money uh, for God. Similarly, uh, you, fi you mentioned about finding a spouse, uh, uh, finding a good spouse, but can we be the perfect spouse or can we be the soulmate? Similarly, it's about uh, like raising kids. Can we raise uh, value-driven or... Uh, kids who will be an asset to the society. So uh, whatever duty we are doing in this world, can we do it to the best of our uh, abilities? And at the same time, it is only possible when we are uh, anchored to the God and Guru. So uh, it's absolutely okay if we are in this world and if we are uh, playing different roles. Thank you. Great point, Anshuman ji. We'll continue with this discussion tomorrow because um, the other half of it is something we are going to delve into tomorrow because all the activities that we do, what is the eventual aim objective around it right and then uh, the beauties of bhagavad gita is it doesn't ask us to take sannyas or run away from what you are doing it has given us a silver bullet in terms of karam yoga that is why that's 2.47 is my favorite shloka swamiji also brought it up in his interview and uh, one on one rather that 80 percent of our life would be doing some kind of a work somewhere right either it's an office or for somebody that's where when we start bringing in that consciousness with the lack of proprietorship, of course, it has to come. When you have a sense of proprietorship, you cannot do Karam Yoga. That's when we start fulfilling the purpose of life as well. And that's when we start discharging our abilities to the best of our duties to the best of our abilities as well. So, yes, it's a very interesting. There's no harm in going after all of these things. Right? I asked Swamiji this thing, right? And that professionally, should I go for the next you know, big um, offer that I get? or move up the hierarchy, he said, yeah, there's one way of going that, you know, I, I can earn more so that I can give more. But that is a very devious path, he said. Okay, you'll not be able to do that. You'll start becoming ambitious and then your time, big slice of your time will be taken away. So you do what is required and beyond the point, if you really, you know, your economics are fine, just devote your time to Seva and Sadhana. I give a very simple answer for that. That set things for me in perspective. So we'll continue on this discussion tomorrow. Yes, there's no harm in going after any of those things. Nothing is, obviously we have to raise family and all that stuff. The point was, should we simply limit it to that template life? Or there's a bigger purpose to that as well. And then why do we go after these things? What is the end objective that we are seeking from each one of those as well. So we will build on that discussion in our next session. Let's hear from, but great point Anshumanji, beautiful points and We'll build on this conversation. Let's hear from real quick from a couple of participants and then are you okay with that, Amrita Maji? Yes, yes. Sagar Ji. Radhe Radhe, Sagar. Radhe Radhe, thank you for waiting. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, very nice conversation. And um, yeah, what the point I added to wanted to add, Anshumanji has already covered, but the facet I want to add is uh, material aspirations. Uh, go hand in hand if they go hand in hand with spiritual aspirations um, then that material aspiration doesn't become so corrupted like for example if I'm pro if somebody is progressing spiritually and they also want to you know 
feel that they can contribute better with their abilities and their knowledge and their uh, experience and their expertise to the betterment of whatever they are aspiring for like a better job you know they can with their expertise they can actually create a totally different better environment for the next job that they are going and they can make a difference in the life of people then i think there is there is a bigger goal rather than just getting it for themselves so so i think being attached spiritually and then if somebody it happens to progress on the material world um not getting so attached to that material but still progressing is the right attitude uh, i would say but but you know this is a cycle just like you want to progress spiritually on material world also you want to have better health you want to have a better job and a better better house but again not getting too attached to that but finding the purpose behind what you are trying to get better at uh, i think is that keeps the balance alive great point sagar ji we'll continue this this is a very interesting conversation we are having so yes so that is very important i can have a better health so that so that if you are able to define it that really defines uh, what are we doing it for so that i can serve people it becomes satvik so that i can serve god it becomes gunatit so that i look beautiful it becomes rajasik so that i can beat people up it becomes tamsik so so that the intention behind it is the key here i can become the ceo of a company so that so that i can massage my ego it becomes rajasik so that i can exert an influence which can make a difference in a lot of people's life i can serve them better it becomes satvik so that i can earn more so that i can give more to god it becomes gunatit so the so that in every material aspiration that we have really defines which category we are actually boxing ourselves and so very beautiful point i think we will continue to build on that tomorrow but great point sagar ji thank you very much let's take um, one more ati ji yes shuti ji राधे 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 जी जी क्वेश्चन शिखा टुडे इज व्हाट आई वाज डिस्कसिंग विद माय डॉटर यस्टरडे माय डॉटर शी एक्चुअली वांट्स अ ग्रैंडफादर हु इज ऑलवेज वेरी इंटरेस्टेड ही 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 कांट सी डजंट हैव साइट एनीमोर um that's what i was trying to explain to her so she was really worried so how i try to understand you know make her understand through this uh that we have a soul plan or the whole like every soul has a plan as a journey so we born we every soul is born as a infant soul and it's a journey from infant soul to baby soul and then you know mature soul to old soul and i think the last one is the transient soul so we have every soul has to go through that journey we have to enjoy or live every part of that journey we can't skip any part of the journey so we can't go from baby soul to a transcendental soul we have to enjoy every part of the journey so maybe he is and you know that part of the journey where he has to you know learn those things what he is doing and maybe in another life or next life or whatever maybe he'll get to this point i'm not saying that i am better than him or anyway but it's just journey every soul has to go through so i think um, our only duty is to love them unconditionally no matter where they are just right. love them unconditionally we can guide them but we can never ever force them to do what we are doing or what we think we are doing is good or better than what they are doing rather rather and yeah. i have two questions nitin yeah pehle beautiful i just wanted to say beautiful point that you called there is a taoist saying which says every snowflake falls at its perfect place that means everybody is perfectly situated where they need to be okay so we cannot say i i am unable to talk my father out of modi okay <laughs> everybody has their own yeah. adjective around it and we have to exhaust all of our vasanas 
which fall into three categories lok vasna shastra vasna or deh vasna and then only we proceed and it is quite possible your grandfather you're talking about once he takes to this path he leaves all of you behind nobody knows how fast yes. he can go so we really can't we really have to accept people as they are as opposed to thinking we are better off or they should be doing it that is the first thing that acceptance that let go part has to come and beyond a point we really can't do much i think that's part of that yes real quick you wanted to ask something yeah just two questions actually they are my daughters but i'll pose them anyway but uh, so she, the first question she asked was that uh, if we in reincarnate again and again same souls we die and then we your voice okay is breaking yeah. you need to fix your audio then why is the population increasing okay this population is not limited to this earth okay just a, just yeah uh, so did you get the question yeah we are reincarnating why is the population increasing right you asked that question yeah we yeah. have no idea of how many souls are out there infinite souls are there our earth our planet is not the only place okay which planet which earth which brahmand we get into can really vary so there are infinite souls don't just look at it from a reference of 7 billion souls alone that's a very very small multiverse yes multi yeah. you're looking at a speck of sand if it's a sea beach you are just looking at a sand our galaxy is like that so we cannot really keep account of why souls are increasing or decreasing because they might be getting transported from another brahmand maybe a 10 headed brahmas brahmand or somewhere we can't really keep an account of that hopefully that puts things in perspective that we can continue on that what yeah. was one yeah i can maybe satisfy her with this one okay so and another one was a very simple question that which one happened first ramayan or shri krishna which which happens first ramayan Who, which which yeah like ramayan which, which, ramayan, uh, ramayan ramayan happened first shishoda maiya used to tell the story of lord ram to lord krishna while putting him to sleep and tell him that keep on doing hmm 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 and when she told him and then ravan picked up mother sita krishna said lakshman where is my dhanush ban okay he forgot for a moment so ramayan happened before and krishna avatar okay. happened afterwards and he used to play with tricks with his friends that i used to be ram they did not believe him there is a very nice leela with radha there He said, "I used to be Ram." He said, "Oh, you are kidding." So it happened. That happened in Treta. This happened in Dwapar. Uh, Dwapar, by the way. Okay. And so uh, the Krishna, he came in like with all the you know the qualities of the God that you mentioned, right? Mm-hmm. You said that He's it God was himself. Krishna who was. He's God himself. Sorry. He's God himself. And and so was Rama, wasn't it? Both are yeah. Both are same. So um, maybe I'm mistaken, but I think I heard here that Krishna. No, actually, it was someone else. That Krishna was the first birth. Like Krishna came first because uh, he was he had all the uh, qualities of the god. No, he was like um, Poon Avatar. He didn't come. There's no first. Yes, he is called Poon Avatar. Yes. So he manifested all his qualities in that avatar. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. In other other avatars, he hides few. Depends on what what avatar he has come up as. It in Ram avatar, he came as a Maryada Purushottam avatar. Then he came as a uh, Hiran. Uh, what what do you call that? Uh, nursing avatar. He came just to save Prahlad at that moment. So he can take when he came as a number avatar. He came just to. uh you know preserve the modesty of draupadi as a as a cloth when he came as a vaman avatar he came just to lift earth from the sea so depending upon what avatar he has taken he manifests in krishna avatar he divulges his true nature and all of his he exhibits all of his qualities that's all it is okay so as a rama as ram he he hid, hid some of his qualities but he when he came it. next yeah. like in krishna avatar then he was he manifested he manifested all of his qualities yeah okay thank you so much thank you No worries. Thank Rather. you much. I know uh, you can make announcements now. Uh, um, Abu Tamani, I, I know just yeah. A couple of hands raised, so I'll let them real quick. Okay. Sunit ji, please go ahead. Yes. Yes. Rade, rade. Yes. I just want to add a quick point. The so we are not able to detach ourselves because our uh, cup is empty. So it is very important. for all of us to attach ourselves with spirituality so that it become easy for us radhe radhe beautiful point sunit ji our cup is empty we need to fill it with the right kind of things and then it will start and then we'll be able to see the same thing with compassion right now we are looking at it from an attachment standpoint 
that is why it becomes increasingly difficult for us but when, when we start looking at it with perspective uh, we'll actually be able to appreciate that somebody has to move on in their journey and we cannot hold them back just for our own personal sake now this is also our selfish interest where we want somebody because my happiness is there i am getting that comfort if you look at it from the soul's perspective they have moved on and it's part of the journey and then it they are freed basically but it's our own attachment it's our own interest which is impeded which causes causes us misery and distress yeah ima ji you can yeah. go ahead please i'll make it quick uh, uh, to answer shruti ji she can look up uh, all the 10 uh, major avatars and uh, shri ram was the seventh avatar and krishna was the eighth and buddha was the ninth and 10th is yet to come thank you Good yeah day. it said hari hari katha anant hari avatar anant but for simplification they talk about 10 avatars or 24 avatars actually god has had infinite avatars since time eternal the major ones is the major it. ones yeah. at least from our um our manvantar's perspective yes we know about them but if you look at god has been taking avatars since i don't know time eternity but yeah thank you for calling that out sima ji okay announcement samuta mani ji and then we can so yes, tomorrow sir. we are going to discuss a uh, couple of interesting concepts so do make it why is it easy for us to judge then to understand okay we will pick up this concept and another one um so i look forward to another fascinating conversation tomorrow over to you amita manishi now okay then yeah thank you everyone it's a wonderful uh, session it's a lot of interactive it's i think nobody wants to end it but we do have to end the session so the attendance tracker has been posted so please take a moment to fill that we do have sanskrit sanskriti coming that's for people in person so if anybody here in dallas you know them please let them know that and we have tyagaraj aradhan that's coming up so that link has also been posted even for international women's day even those link has been posted so please take a moment to see that thank you everyone nitin ji thank you so much closing prayers from your side we can do the closing prayers and if you are from dallas please fill it out um we need some testimonials for swami ji's book in temple i really hope you can help out on that do fill it out on the attendance tracker and i'll be in touch with you and uh, if you are in india do plan to come over to us okay for the family camp that will come up in july so i look forward to seeing you then keep reminding you that okay let's do our closing prayers then om sarve bhavantu sukhinah sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashchit dukh bhag bhave om shanti 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 thank you everyone have a wonderful day and great rest of your evening i'll see you tomorrow adradhe thank you everyone adradhe radhe thank you thank you shyam ji